You know, Amir, I know this could be one of your dear friends, and I'm sorry about this, but the <laughs> cash flow king real estate podcaster has been accused of an $11 million Ponzi scheme. Everyone knows that journalists have no friends. <laughs> that's not, so that's, that's right. not possible. So we know that that's false right from the get go. But I just feel like there's like all of, especially with the uh, social media, there's all these sort of. Um, uh, you know, these uh, real estate hackers and people who are like, here, real estate is passive income and this is how you can be rich and here's the bear method, this and that. And, uh, you know, it, it just doesn't play out that way. And it's funny to me that these things go out and then people come and show up and they're like, hey, I just saw this on TikTok. Let me go do this as well. And I gotta tell you, you, I like to be authentic. Every morning, I'm listening to affirmations on YouTube. And right before I get my affirmation, somebody's telling me I should own multifamily. Yeah, and as a developer right. for 20 years, that's I'm like, right. it's not so easy. So listen, I'm curious, Leo. What is the SEC and how did they find out? And like, how is that governing body now, find the, the governing body going after him in this scheme? If it is true, he's just accused. Let's so, be real, by the so, way, he's just let, accused. So, so you know, our office uh, does a lot of uh, defense of... Uh, net winners that are called in Ponzi scheme cases. That simply means that you've invested your, you know, your, your your dollars and you've received those dollars back. They're called net winners. They've either received interest or what seemingly is interest. And all types of exclusions and exceptions apply to that rule. And Ponzi Ponzi schemers uh, or schemes in general are are exceptionally difficult, especially if they come into a, a bankruptcy arena. Especially difficult to identify. Or? Yes, they are because it 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 you know you have multiple actors in the bankruptcy realm that are going to be looking at how the dollars are shifted from A to B to identify whether it's the dollar of Peter to pay Paul or whether it's the do dollar of Peter that gave it to a company that borrowed at a very, very high interest rate and simply became cash flow negative and became bankrupt and therefore not necessarily Ponzi. In fact, there's a very big case uh, it's it's public. It's Jason Nissim. It's national events. It was a big ticket reseller. Now, unfortunately, this this gentleman uh, he went to jail. He came out already. Uh, lives on the island. Uh, he had is a that public. <laughs> that is that is public. That is public. That is public information. Uh, he and you can check that. Uh, he essentially was a, was a math student. It was reported by New York Post back way when. It's a little bit of an we oldie but a goodie. About it. An oldie but a goodie. Uh, basically, he would he would purchase uh, tennis. Tennis matches, soccer matches, all the all the big events that you know about, uh, and you know cash flow got really really tight uh, because you're taking enormous amounts of either loans or or you know working with uh, factors, and you couldn't afford it. So they've alleged that he was a Ponzi schemer, yeah. and that is under question right now. So Ponzi scheming is a, is a how do you identify that as an investor? How do you know who to trust? Uh, when investing. I mean, because you hear stories of very established folks who get caught. I have an excellent answer for that. You not only you not only have to have a third party uh, auditing company, but an auditing company for the auditing company, because today's day we were photo we're Adobe Photoshopping everything. Uh, and we all know, you know, Bernie and what what he what he did. Was capable of doing. So you know, you have to have what's called the trifecta. You put an agent in the middle that has no emotion with the relationship that you have who took your money. It just seems like such really a process hard. for investments to move. I mean, real estate is one. Of the, it's the largest asset class in the world. It is. You have everybody investing in it. How do you expect people to understand that process? Uh, I think education is important when investing. The SEC has exceptional uh, resources for that, as well as the Attorney General's office. If you if you like those things, I happen to read those things. But yet again, I'm an attorney and I advise my clients all the time about that. You know, if you're if you're a smart, astute investor, you know you really you really depend on three things. You depend on your gut, you depend on your finances, and you depend on your relationships. That's really what good business is made out of. Um, and sometimes somewhere along the way, you're giving up those relationships in exchange for money. And that's not always a great thing. You know what so. we always say? That it's, it, I agree with you, it's reputation and credibility, which is expertise and trustworthiness. Yeah. Amir and I are on the camera all the time, being authentic and truly giving the information out there and the results are proven, whether the real deal success or with me, we've been recapitalizing deals for like the last year and a half on getting these deals done in these distressed situations where your customer was happy. It comes down to just that experience and expertise, like you said, just besides having 19 people in between you and the capital. I think of board of directors is important to have for any real estate investor. Um, and they really don't. I mean, we deal in restructuring and bankruptcy. 
I, you know, I can't help but say how many times you know clients have been in you know my office, uh, 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 you know, ahead of me, and and we're like, hey, I was up, you know, two billion dollars, I'm negative two hundred fifty, and it's not because they're not they're not going to NYU or they're not smart people. They don't have good people that make decisions with right, them. They're right. making it alone. And I don't care if you're a billionaire or a thousandaire. You have to have a good board of directors. You got to have a doctor. You got to have an accountant. You got to have a lawyer. Got maybe a good reporter to report your good news. You know? Well, you know, it's funny. We this this month our cover story is on syndicators mm. and the, these guys, these gurus who sort of go yeah. out there, gurus <laughs> who go out there and look. Uh, people they hear these experts come on their TikTok or on their Instagram and tell them how they're doing it in front of a Ferrari or some house in Miami. They're like, I want a piece of that action. And they manage to get a lot of activity from that, even Huge. though they're not able by law, they're not able to solicit funds that way, are they? No, they're not. SEC guidelines are quite clear. Uh, it's Reg D. Uh, if you're if you're get, if you're putting out a dollar for anybody, it's always a Reg D, um, and that person has to have at least at least uh, two hundred fifty thousand dollars or be worth like two or three million dollars, whatever whatever those regs say. But it, it's important to understand that if you're taking money from someone, you're not only doing it because those guidelines exist and you want to make a return, but you're also doing it because you want to build trust and a good name. And unfortunately, syndicators are, you know, kind of like a one pop song. They kind of get in and get out. Uh, and if they fail, they don't really sometimes pay back those individuals because they're like, hey, I took a chance. I wanted to get into this thing because my There's cousin a great brother, meme, mother by got the way, into it. Out right now of like every syndicator in front of the loan document sweating like crazy when That's they right. realize what their liability is. Because oftentimes they're signing things that they don't understand. The, they the didn't best, read. The best time, and one, one, one other thing about individuals that are getting into the real estate market, if I may just say this, the time to look at your documents is when you're negotiating them, but you should not look ahead to the deal without actually understanding what you are signing because a lot of the people that are reaping the detriment uh, of their own actions are the same individuals that were like, oh, I didn't know that I was signing this. Now it's pretty clear that I have a very, very big problem. So those individuals should be very, very careful. Read your documents and actually pay your attorneys and your accountants you know, what they deserve to be paid to look over those but documents. Even, I feel like even with attorneys that you pay for, you still have to read the documents yourself. There is no getting around. RTFM. I want to say, God must have told you that. No. Read the effing manual. Yeah, in, right. the, in this in this day and age, I really want I need to say this. Gotham deserves a new class of counsel because the counsel that is typically taking care of these types of uh, 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 paperwork um, are the per, are the are the counselors that are putting people into uh, uh, contracts. We're in this day and age right now where we're looking at contraction and how to get individuals out of contracts and th that's a different class of counsel that is supposed to be doing that because that counsel that was putting you into those contracts doesn't necessarily know the concepts that are tenant to taking you out of those contracts. So there's this different kind of expertise for of course, getting out of contracts. Of course. I would think the people who put you into contracts would be the best experts. Oh, yes, well, yes, from, because they're thinking about opportunity. But when, but when taking someone out of contract, you have taxable concerns, you have litigation, you have concepts uh, you know, such as financial instruments that you have to understand, confessions of judgment and when they're, when they're filed. All these things matter in considering how to take your client out of the valley of the yeah, shadow of death. Yeah, but we're also human. Yes, and everything has been emotions. rosy for 19 years. That's right. So no one was thinking about that downside risk until this moment. Of course. So, of course. Hey, did you hear, brother? Hey, did you hear? Thanks, Leo. Absolutely. My pleasure, guys. Thank you for having me.